Okay, now uh, I'm back. I don't know why I keep on saying thank you. I, I don't know. It, it sounds really professional, I think. <laughs> so anyway, um, but yeah, so this is part five to my rundown of Cubase. Uh, again, uh, right now I'm going to show you guys the inserts, which is also going to be my VSTs. Um, so yeah, let's do that, shall we? So, uh, again... I showed you guys the channel settings and all that. Right here, uh, here, let me show you this real quick. Right now, this is active, okay? So this this EQ right now, which is this, this is the the channel settings. Uh, hold on real quick. Ugh. I had a little air bubble or something. Okay, anyway, uh, where was I at? Oh, yeah. So, uh, right here we have your, uh, you, you can, uh, this will activate pretty much the, well, no, this will activate the channel settings, but this will bypass it. So right now, if I were to take all these and just tweak them just randomly, I'll just leave it like this. Looks weird, but okay, let's play this. Okay, so now watch when I, bab uh, when I bypass it. So all bypass does is it will literally just bypass the channel settings and everything. So uh, it's really helpful if you want to see a before and after kind of thing. If you're EQing something or adding effects, you can just uh, activate and bypass the different effects to see if you got the sound that you wanted, if you made any changes, or if you just wasted your time. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's that. So actually, I'm going to bypass this, though, because I don't really want that high-end fuzz. Uh, so anyway, then you have your uh, the sends over here, which all you'd have to do is literally just match this up with down here. And the EQ, if I were to... Here, let's get full screen. I don't know why that happens. Whenever I open up the mixer for some reason, or the channel settings, it, uh, literally, it uh, doesn't minimize it, but it restores down if you want to say that <laughs> it'll uh make the screen smaller and it moves it over here for some reason which gets kind of annoying but oh well and so there i'm just going to turn those off just make sure there you go see so now if i don't on uh, see so i have to actually activate at least one of these in order to activate the channel settings or the eq whatever you want to say so the channel settings literally are everything right here into one little thing this right here has all this and actually this so that's the channel settings now it is easy it's pr it's a little easier to select everything from the channel settings instead of going to here but it also you know actually I do it from here a lot of the time but I've actually is trying to I'm actually trying to get more used to using the channel settings instead because it's it's easier and it's a little bit quicker so, but my uh, one word of advice, I just said quicker. It's not really a good word to use because when you're recording and mixing and all that fun stuff, not a good idea to rush through things. It's really good to just take your time because the more time you take, the more time you put into a project or any type of song or whatever, you know, whatever, the better it's going to sound more likely, you know. So, in in most cases. But in some cases, you spend too much time, you're just paranoid about it, like, oh, that doesn't sound right, blah, blah, blah. You know, then you are you might just mess something up horribly. So, and uh, don't forget, Cubase can only undo so much. And then you just have to restart your project and, you know, use all your, your uh, work. So anyway, that's just a heads up. Anyway, so we're going to activate the insert right here. Oh, we can't. Again, we have to select first. Now... This right here is, I'll show you the ones that are built into Cubase LE5, and I'll show you the stuff that I got outside of Cubase. So right now we have your uh, delay. Um, this will give it a nice little, well, delay. <laughs> That's to uh, say the least. So let's open this up. I think it's going to take a little bit here, because again, my, my processor is kind of running high here. Okay, here we go. So now if you listen to the delay, with the delay...
See? So it gives it a nice, uh, So the ping pong delay gives it like a stereo, just kind of, you know, trippy, almost kind of sound to it. Uh, and if you click on this again, you could select something else. Uh, Room, uh, Roomworks SE Reverb, that's also in Cubase 5, uh, for as far as I know. Uh, well, at least when, um, what's his name, James MSV is actually one of the guys who told me uh, that uh, is well. He didn't tell me specifically, but he was doing a tutorial on how to record metal, which helped a lot. So James MSV, you know, you did a good job, dude. Um, but yeah, so uh, he mentioned reverb uh, in one of his effects for snare drums, and it does actually f make it sound a lot better. But uh, so yeah. Uh, the reverb, I use Roomworks uh, SE sometimes because it gives it a nice little reverb, so I'll go right there. There we go. Hold on a minute. There we are. Okay, let's activate this now. All right, now if you listen. So there, that's what the reverb does. It makes it really... Now, imagine, imagine that slight reverb on a snare drum makes it fill out. You would be surprised. So yeah, uh, mono to stereo. I think this is... This I'm going to try for if I do a solo or something. I'm going to try that because I think what that does is it turns something that's more, you know, centered. It just sounds kind of empty if you change it to stereo. Because that's already a stereo track. I'm not. Yeah, I just I record in a stereo track. I'm stupid. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you record vocals in a mono track. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, just a heads up on that. Uh, so yeah, do not record vocals in a stereo track. Record in a mono. Anyway, uh, so mono to stereo. If I'm not mistaken, that's more. Uh, it, it'll turn something. That it does what it's I guess named. It turns something that's mono and make it spreads it out more, so it's more it it uh deepens it, I guess you could say, if you want to say that. So that's what that does, I think. I've I haven't actually used it, so I'm gonna use that probably for this new song I'm working on, which I will show you at the end of this. Uh so yeah. Uh and then distortion it comes with I think it came with the tube. <laughs> And distortion. So I think the tube is a uh, is an amp simulator, and distortion, I think, is literally the kind of like a distortion pedal for the tube. <laughs> I love saying that the tube. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, we have that, and then all these right here. Again, these are all f uh, free VSTs, by the way. Uh, I'll I'll uh, mention all these that I got. These I got from free VST, uh, no, VST Planet, vstplanet.com. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, you can get them from there. You can get them from my VST, which I got some of these from here, I think. Most of them I got from VST Planet. Uh, you can get them from my VST, uh, and freevst.com, I think it was. My two ones I used are VST Planet and my VST.com. So that's where I got most of these. VST Dynamics, that, if I'm not mistaken, was from uh, uh, Cubase. I think this was actually a stock plugin. Uh, mod modulation, uh, we got Auto Pan, Chorus, Flanger, Phaser, Rotary, Tremolo, and Vibrato. Those are all stocks. Those are all stock plugins. Other, Bit Crusher and Chopper, uh, that is. Actually, the Bit Crusher, that's not. Chopper, I might have been. I'm, I can't remember. I, I don't think this is, though, either. These, this one is for sure not. Actually, this one somehow got imported in here, I think, uh, from Fruity Loops. I'm not sure how that's actually got in here. But, uh, yeah. So, mainly all these free ones I have. Uh, the Pollen. The preampus, the, actually the preampus. These are amp simula uh, the amp simulators. I, if I'm not mistaken, the heads. 
Uh, to 10 minutes of recording. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, where was I at? Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Distortion. These add a really good amount of distortion. Um, so, I, I'm going to... Uh, I did not know that the tube... I think that's a like an amp simulator. So, I'm going to try and add that with one of these effects. With one of these uh, distortions. But the Paulin preampus uh the the pollen i forgot where actually i got the pollen from that it was actually in a uh, fruity loop so that was one of the plugins i was using for dubstep to give it kind of like the distorted wobbles which uh the pollen i could actually thank uh how to make e music uh video how to make dubstep so again that's a shout out to them i'll put their channel and uh james msv's channel in the description as well uh so yeah, the preampus, all these preampus ones, those I got from acmebargig.com. Uh, that's they have a lot of really good free VST instrument. Uh, their VST instrument like amp simulations and all that. They have free ones and ones that are commercial that you actually have to pay for. So yeah, and then moving along here. We have the dynamic switch, we have the compressor, the uh, IQ4 GUI, which I'm pre it, it almost looks, I'll pull that up real quick, discard, it almost looks like a mixer, but I th I'm pretty sure this is literally like a multi-band compressor, which I didn't know until I actually used it, and I was like, hey, that, that, that actually pretty much, compre that's pretty much acting like a multi-band compressor, I think this is a multi-band compressor, pr that compressor, mainly because it's got a threshold, and uh, you can tweak with the low shelves and how much you want the lows to get, get through. So I'm pretty sure that this literally is a multi-band compressor. But this is also free. Um, that one, if I'm not mistaken, I got on VST Planet. So it's a really nice, really nice free stuff. Uh, MDA, this actually, all these MDA ones came in like a bundle. You can look at uh, bundles at the uh, VST Planet. Uh, you'll get all these. I have not used all of these yet. <laughs> so I have used uh, the DSer that pretty much, if you can hear whenever I say S, S, S okay. Uh, that'll take like those high S noises, like the high frequency, kind of like that. It'll kind of, I guess, weaken the, weaken the frequency. So... You know what, I'm going to go through these at the second, uh, in part six. Part six, I think, would be the last uh, last part to this video, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know, it might be a part seven, seven and a half, I don't know. So yeah, uh, I will be back. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in a little bit.